Hi, boys and girls. Greetings. I hope you are doing great. As a small boy, um, I don't know, I, I think I was in grade one, two or three, and even before that, I thought my dad was powerful, that no one could match him, no one could beat him in a fight, uh, even if they challenged him, they could not beat him. His nickname was called Duff. Uh, you know, during those days, uh, we had these trucks and buses that were called Duff. So they were associated with power. So my dad's nickname was Duff because we thought... I mean, at that age, I thought you could do anything. He was powerful. Well, as I grew up, I discovered that he was not as powerful. So let's go back to the Bible, the book of Daniel. Uh, the four Hebrew boys are in Babylon. Um, not their original home, as we spoke about last week. Uh, they were captured and taken to a foreign land. In chapter 2, Daniel was able to interpret King Nebuchadnezzar's dreams and was promoted to a high position. Uh, the king lavished him with many gifts. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Moreover, uh, at Daniel's request, the king appointed the other three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as administrators over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. Now, it's a few years later, we're in Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 to 30. The Bible tells us of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Three Jewish young men who refused to bow to the golden image uh, set up by King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. I mean, boys and girls, this image was 27 meters high and about 2.7 meters wide, made of gold. <laughs> so when the three Hebrew boys refused to worship the idol. They were supposed to worship the idol. Everyone else was worshiping the idol uh, whenever sounds were made. They were brought before the king and given another chance to comply. However, they remained steadfast in their faith and commitment to worshiping the only God of Israel. They worshipped the only God. You remember commandment number one, there is only one God. Commandment number two, we shall not worship any other God. So these three Hebrew boys refused to worship this idol made by King Nebuchadnezzar. As a result of their defiance, the king ordered them to be thrown into a fiery furnace. Miraculously, the men survived the intense heat and a fourth figure was seen uh, with them in the furnace. Verse 25 of chapter 3, he said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unarmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Well, boys and girls, we believe that that was the Lord Jesus before he came in human form, uh, born of Virgin Mary. So Jesus was there in the beginning. So in, at different times, he appeared to people. And in this case, we see that he was with the three Hebrew boys. Um. Witnessing this miracle, King Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged the power of God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he decreed, gave a law that no one should speak against their God. Now, boys and girls, there may be no 
27 meter high image of uh, Nebuchadnezzar today. But when I was preparing for this lesson, I was thinking, what is it that the world is trying to get us to worship? To choose between worshiping the true God and worshiping those things. And I thought maybe uh, it's possible that there could be brands of clothes, shoes, uh, things. Uh, there could be all these. There is nothing wrong with good things and richness. There's nothing wrong with that. It only becomes a problem, boys and girls, if those things take us away from the true God. So, in Proverbs chapter 25, 29, verse 25, it says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. The three Hebrew boys could have said they are afraid of King Nebuchadnezzar and bound to that idol which is made. Boys and girls, everyone around you may be choosing to worship all kinds of things and turning away from God and not worshiping the true God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you may be feeling lonely or feeling scared. So the fear of man will be a snare. Do not be afraid. Last week we said God, one of his characteristics is that God is always with us. He is Emmanuel. Today, God is powerful, boys and girls. So the fourth person, um, that's Jesus. The Lord Jesus when he was on earth, boys and girls, he performed all kinds of miracles. Remember that he is God. He did all kinds of miracles. Because he is God, because he is with us today, because he is all powerful. Boys and girls, I don't know what fire you may find yourself in. What pain you may be going through. I want you to know that Jesus is with you in that fire. He is the fourth person. I want you to know, boys and girls, that Jesus is powerful. He can do the miracles. You know, it's, it is possible. Last week, we spoke about those Hebrew boys just eating vegetables and they were better, wiser than all the other uh, young people who were eating all kinds of foods from the king. Boys and girls, I want you to know that this God is with you. This God is all-powerful. There are Places today in the world where it's very dip difficult to be a Christian. I'm showing some of the places on the maps. And there are places, there are countries where it's very difficult to be a follower of Jesus. There are places where Christians face all kinds of violence. Boys and girls, this is the fire which the Hebrew boys, those three Hebrew boys found themselves in. And it's important to remember that we may be facing all kinds of violence, all kinds of challenges. Our God is with us. One, two, our God is all powerful. Verse 16 of uh, chapter three, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve 
is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Boys and girls, there are situations, there are people, there are children in parts of the world who are in the fire. Or you may be going through some kind of fire. I want you to know that God is with you. Number two, God is all powerful. You are not alone in that fire. You are not going through that pain alone. It's not like he's not there. You know, the Hebrew boys, when they came out of that fire, they were not even smelling the fire. There was no smoke smelling. He will not leave you nor forsake you. There are Christians who are being killed in some countries because they refuse to bow to those images or gods. There are places in the world where churches are being attacked because they will not listen to what King Nebuchadnezzar is saying. We worship God for who he is. He's omnipresent. He is with us. He is all-powerful. We praise him for what he has done. He has sent his son to save us. And today he helps us as we go through the fires of life. Only the all-powerful God, boys and girls, can do the miracles like what he did for those three Hebrew boys. So I want to encourage you as I close. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you that you are with the boys and girls as they go through this life. And Lord, thank you that you are all powerful. There is nothing impossible with you. There is nothing that you cannot do. Father, we find ourselves in all kinds of fires. The children find themselves in all kinds of fires. But thank you, Lord, that you are the fourth person. Thank you, Lord, that you rescue your children. Thank you for the miracle that, Lord, we can trust you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <music>